Hello guys, this is Alex from We Talk UAB and I'm really really excited to start off this channel with a review from the brand new Phantom 4 Pro. I had the pleasure to test this Phantom 4 Pro and I have to say I was a little bit skeptical in the beginning as I thought the Phantom 4 Pro would be just an extension of the well-known Phantom 4 with some minor changes. But I was completely wrong. Once I had this drone in my hands and I could test it, I could fly it, my mind was completely blown. For those who know me from my personal channel, you may know that I posted a video saying that I would not upgrade my Phantom 3 Pro to the new Phantom 4. But this is a completely new story. The word pro here stands for really big enhancements that will make a difference to us droners and filmmakers. Let's take a closer look now. Even though visually the gimbal hasn't changed at all, the camera is completely new. The Phantom 4 Professional uses a 1 inch CMOS sensor with 20 million effective pixel supporting maximum 4K at 60 frames per second video recording with a 100 megabyte per second maximum video bitrate. Let's just talk about this for a second. I was expecting maybe a 16 megapixel sensor, but I never expected a 20 megapixel sensor. It's not only an interesting improvement in quality, but it also includes a mechanical shutter. This changes the game completely. Let me explain why. For example, for photogrammetry software, it will allow us to not have image distortion. And on topography, it will allow us to take much higher resolution pictures for creating our maps. And of course not to forget that both the better sensor plus the mechanical shutter will give the perfect tool to photographs to take those amazing still pictures. If there was something that could be improved a lot on the previous Phantom models, we all know it was the photography. The lens is 24mm equivalent to a 35mm with a field of view of 84 degree. And the comparison we'll be doing next week on We Talk UAV will compare this Phantom 4 Pro with the Phantom 4 and how what we just said affects your footage. So make sure to subscribe right after watching this video to this channel because you'll be up to date to all the contents we're uploading here at We Talk UAV and of course take a look at our website. Another amazing change which I just mentioned is that we now have a much more narrow field of view with 84 degree instead of 94 as we had before. Here's the example creating, in my opinion, a much more cinematic result. We're familiar with 4K footage as we have it since the Phantom 3 Pro. However, what we didn't have yet was 4K with 60 frames per second. This will allow us to edit our footage into beautiful slow-mo and take breathtaking scenes. We'll be testing this soon also. The aperture can be adjusted from f2.8 to f11. This way we're one step closer to saying goodbye to regular ND filters. An ND16 filter for example had a 4f step filter strength which meant that if your drone had a fixed aperture of 2.8 it went 4 steps up to f11, allowing less light to enter the sensor. This way, simply by closing the aperture, we'll get the same result as if we were using an ND16 filter. Simply amazing. However, this does not mean that now we won't be using filters, as of course there are polarized filters and some other types. About the codec H265, without getting into technical specs, it's just the next step after the H264, allowing up to HK UHD TV and 300 frames per second, and it has up to 40 or 50% bitrate reduction compared to the H264, which means that it's perfect for our cameras that keep improving year after year, and this will even allow us to broadcast up to 4K online, which means that everything will be captured with much more detail and all the necessary data for a better post-production. The bitrate has also been improved from 60 Mbps to up to 100 Mbps. Summing up, a higher bitrate will accommodate much higher quality on our final output on the video. Just as a comparison, Blu-ray has about 20 Mbps, so just think about it. Another interesting change, even though I'm pretty sure we won't be using it a lot, is the increase of the ISO range. Up to 6400 in video and 12800 in still images, when setting it of course in the manual mode. We have now three different image max sizes. Let me explain. We can take photos in three different scales, 3, 2, 4, 3 and of course our loft 16, 9. 
Plus, we're able now to shoot up up to 14 frames per second in burst mode. The camera also allows us now to use a micro SD card up to 128GB and it requires though now minimum a level 10 with at least 15 megabytes per second. The body has a few changes. Even though the weight has been only increased about 8 grams from its previous version, the aircraft itself hasn't changed a millimeter. It's still 350 millimeters in diagonal size. The aircraft hasn't changed visually a lot either. It includes now new sensors, which we'll be talking about in a second. Let's talk first about some of the specs of the drone. In the cool sport mode, it maintains its 6 meters per second of maximum ascending speed, 4 meters per second at descending speed and 20 meters per second of, of maximum speed. On the other hand, on the P mode, we obtain a maximum ascent speed of 5 meters per second, descending speed of 3 meters per second and a maximum speed of 14 meters per second, where the Eddy mode will get up to 16 meters per second. All more than reasonable speeds. According to the user guide, the operating temperature of this Phantom 4 Pro remains from 0 degree Celsius up to 40 degrees Celsius. Also one of the greatest improvements on the Phantom 4 Pro by DJI are the new lateral sensors and also the sensor that they have included in the back part of the drone. Let's take a look. Phantom 4 Professional has a new obstacle sensing system on its rear and 3D TOF obstacle avoidance on its two sides. The rear system has been included and it works exactly as the front system. They are high resolution stereo vision sensors. The obstacle avoiding range here is from 0.7 meters up to 30 meters, which is about 110 feet. This will stop the drone from flying into a wall for example, also backwards and will keep the drone hovering in front of the obstacles. This will avoid many many crashes. The new lateral sensors, 3D time of flight sensors work by illuminating the scene with modulated light and measuring the phase delay of the returned light. The phase delay is proportional to the actual distance. Sounds complicated, but we've been living with this technology for a few years now. For example, a vacuum robot. The obstacle avoidance range for this new 3D TOF is from 0.2 meters to 7 meters. According to official data, it doesn't have problems detecting trees, walls or objects. However, there may be some issues with transparent objects and small sized objects, so be careful with that please. The obstacle avoiding range is for both front and rear sensing systems horizontal 60 degrees and vertical 50 degrees. For the TOF on both sides, it's horizontal 70 degrees and vertical 20 degrees. So to the questions in which modes the sensors are activated, to say that on the P mode only the front and the rear sensors are activated. However, if you jump up to the beginner mode or the new tripod mode, also the lateral sensors will be activated, giving you a 360 obstacle avoiding system. So this network creates a 5 direction obstacle avoidance front back at both laterals plus down and a total of 4 direction of obstacle avoidance. Now let's talk about the remote controller. The remote controller is also one of the biggest improvements. A 5.8 G link is added. Many Wi-Fi and Bluetooth devices work at the 2.4 G frequency band, which will interfere the wireless communication of the aircraft that works at the same frequency band. Currently, the 5.8 frequency band has not been used widely, that is, the aircraft at this frequency band will not be easily interfered. The maximum transmission distance is divided into two different compliance, FCC compliant with 4.3 miles or 7 kilometers and CE compliant with 2.2 miles. And now we'll see the difference between the Phantom 4 Pro and the Phantom 4 Pro Plus. Their remote controllers are different. The Phantom 4 Professional's remote controller includes a 5.5 inch, 1080p and 1000 nit built-in display. Its screen can be seen clearly in direct sunlight, it can be used in low temperature environments and a mobile device is no longer required. Amazing. We have to think here that a normal tablet such as an iPad has generally 
400 to 700 nits, which means now that in many cases our new screen is more than twice as bright as tablets or smartphones. The remote controller also features an HDMI port, a micro SD card slot, a built-in microphone and a speaker, which allows for live streaming and video editing anytime and anywhere. The battery of the controller remains a 6000 mAh LiPo 2S, allowing up to 5 hours of use on a full charge. Imagine that you can use up to 10 batteries on your P4 Pro and just one charge on your controller. I'm going to tell you now the specs and features of the new Phantom 4 Pro battery. However, I can't really show it to you because this one that was given to me is just the Phantom 4 battery. It works perfectly on the Phantom 4 Pro. The battery has enhanced significantly its capability up to 30 minutes with 5870 mAh according to DJI, which is insane. Again, we will be comparing it to the Phantom 4's battery next week. The battery also has a 15.2 voltage and the type of battery remains still Lipo 4S, though its energy has been increased up to 89.2 Watt, with a max charging power of 100 Watt and a net weight of 468 grams. The charger on the other hand gives up to 100 Watt and a voltage of 70.4 volts. And finally, let's test the intelligent fly modes as there is some brand new features that you will enjoy a lot definitely. We went outside and tested them, so let's take a look. We know the tap fly from the Phantom 4. You can easily tap on your screen to adjust a new fly direction. There are three different tap modes. The tap forward, which will make the drone fly forward in that direction you just tapped. Tap backward, careful here as the drone flies to the opposite side of where you tapped. For example, if you tapped on the top right corner, it'll fly back to the left bottom corner direction. And the last one is the tap free mode, where you'll be locking the forward direction of the Phantom 4 without locking the camera direction, allowing it to turn as it flies. Be really careful in this last mode as the obstacle avoidance is not available. The active track is not new at all, but let's highlight again all of its capabilities. The drone automatically recognizes subjects, allowing it to track them and get better shots. Flying in complex situations and keeping the subject in frame is quite difficult sometimes, so the active track will recognize people, animals and vehicles. We also have three different modes here. First, the trace mode, where it will be tracking and following a subject from behind or in front of it, avoiding obstacles. The profile shot, which will allow us to fly alongside a subject to get amazing profile shots. And finally the spotlight shot, which will allow us to keep the subject in frame and fly as wildly as we want, of course always being careful with our surroundings. The upgraded RTH mode, one thing that has caused many crashes to lots of people, but has also saved us from even more. The improved system records its route as it flies, allowing it to return along the same route avoiding obstacles if the control signal is disconnected. When taking off, the Phantom 4 Pro will get a picture of the scene below and compare its recording with what it sees as it returns, for more precise landing. Interesting also is that it detects whether the spot is suitable for landing. If you're for example landing somewhere with obstacles or stones, it'll start hovering and will alert the pilot. Just great.
And the last mode is great for the selfie lovers. For me, probably the least important one, the gesture mode. It'll recognize a subject and will keep it in frame and when he lifts his arm in order to take a selfie. It'll recognize a subject and will keep it in frame when he lifts his arm in order to take a selfie. A 3 second countdown will begin and a photo will be taken. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed this review and learned a lot and please forgive us if there are some mistakes as this is our first review on this channel. Don't forget to subscribe, our next video will be the comparison between the Phantom 4 Pro and the Phantom 4. So make sure to leave a like, comment if you have any questions and we'll answer as fast as we can. So remember, stay calm and let's talk UAV.